What's up everybody? I'm bringing you my part 2 of the GEPRC GEP210 review. Finally got enough time to first of all get all the parts in and second of all get enough time to actually build this thing. Um, just because of my real job and family, a lot of this stuff is getting uh, built around 11, 12 o'clock at night until 2 o'clock in the morning. But, you know, at least uh, it, it's done and uh, I'm super excited about it. Again, it is my first um, real FPV racer, so um, a lot of challenges for me on this, but uh, overall, I am super excited. So I'll explain some of the things that I, I, I really like about it, and then uh, some of the things that I think they could do better on this uh, frame as well. So first, I'll cover what I have on it. Um, I ended up using DYS uh, 1806, BE 1806, 2300 KV motors. Um, it could obviously go with a larger motor if you wanted to. Um, it is uh, um, spinning um, bullnose 5045 uh, King Kong uh, props. Got red ones on the front, black ones on the back just to kind of get a little uh, separation. Um, on top I, I bought two Bonka batteries. They're 1500 Ma 35C uh, 3S Bonka batteries. Um, it's actually fast enough for me right now. Maybe one day once I uh, get a hang of flying a little bit better I'll go on the 4S but 3S is a great place to start for a beginner. Did also end up buying um, the red um, marker and I actually colored all of the sides red kinda has more of a speedier look to it. Uh, on the top here there is a, a Lemon DSMX um, diversity satellite receiver with the F3 board that I have in there, you're able to bind the satellite and use that as your primary receiver, which is really nice. It is very, very small uh, and uh, very lightweight, which makes it nice. So looking at it from the side here, inside, I did end up using the Diatone version 5 power distribution board. Um, I'll throw a pic picture up on the screen. And the reason I ended up using that, just like I mentioned before, the one that comes with this, the uh, ESC um, uh, uh, leads or the actual ESC uh, uh, pads where you solder on, they come out from the side and with the side panels here it would have been very difficult to do. So the, the version 5 um, power distribution board from Diatone, they go to the front and the back so soldering is a lot easier. Um, so that's definitely one thing that I think GEP could do better instead of the, uh, the board that comes with it. Um, use a power distribution board where leads go to the front and the back instead of the sides. Uh, again, just for, for space here. Uh, as I mentioned, there's an F3 board inside. Now the whole thing is actually mounted upside down. So um, you have the battery strap. Um, then I've got two little teeny tiny M3 washers. Um, if it focuses, um, it's just a, a black, there we go, uh, black 3 M3 washer. There is two of them stacked on top of each other and then the power distribution board sits on top of that. Then I have, um, these are 7 uh, millimeter standoffs, um, which is holding the power distribution board in. And then on top of that, obviously right in between there, is where the F3 board sits and then it's being held on. Uh, by some white nylon lock nuts on top here. I'll, I'll try to throw a picture up on the screen here as well. So the whole thing, you can actually see the board from this side here. So flying right side up, of course, means that the board is upside down. And also I have the USB plug coming out of the side here so you can actually program it and change PIDs without pulling the whole thing apart. Um, so the board is uh, twisted 180 degrees upside down and 90 degrees, actually minus 90 degrees to the side. That's the clean flight settings would be 180 this way and then 90 degrees um, this way. So this way and this way. Uh, clean flight allows you to easily change that in the configuration. It's uh, not that easy. I mean, sorry, it's very, very easy. And uh, you'll see currently I don't have a camera in here. And the reason I don't have a camera in there is because I took a nasty, nasty fall. I ended up splitting my camera mount or the lens mount off the actual camera board. This is a 26 millimeter uh, 700 TVL 
CCD camera it would have been really nice but I actually never got to see what kind of picture comes out of it so I can't tell you exactly how good it is but the nice part is it is 26 millimeters and the way that I attach this is I used um, on the on the uh, strap here I used um, uh, tie straps and I just tied it around on both sides which probably was the reason that this came off when it hit the ground uh, so if I were to do this again, which obviously I will be doing this again, uh, I'm probably going to end up trying to figure out a way to attach the lens to the actual mount instead of the board to the mount, because I think that's the problem. If I would have had the lens attached to the mount, I don't think it would have snapped off. So something to keep in mind, if anybody has any great ideas about this, I would uh, definitely love to hear it. Um, I, I'm just not a big fan of this... Um, this this mount it really doesn't I mean, at least for the type of camera that I went with it just doesn't have the right holes to actually attach to so I'll put another video out on FPV but I'll, I'll did, I, I did want to talk a little bit more more about what I've got here for the gear so I have an Ishin um, ET 200R video transmitter I used a right angle RPSMA adapter to have the um, clo cloverleaf antenna come out from the top here in the hole so that worked out great um, did want to uh, have a word of caution for everybody who is building your first quad um, or your first FPV racer I should say make sure you never turn on your video transmitter without the antenna on it because if you do what you'll end up happening is is you'll end up having a dud which uh, if, if you you know fire one of these up with power without an antenna it will fry and that's exactly what happened to me and uh, I knew that was the case unfortunately again it was late when I was building it and just wasn't thinking enough but make sure whatever you do always power on to I mean always have an antenna when you power on your video transmitter so what else the other thing I want to mention about the power lead you'll see that I've got it coming out of the side here this is not the best way to do this um, reason being is is when you actually plug this in and I'll plug it in right now so you guys can also see the, the LEDs on the side here so if you were to plug it in just like that and uh, try to spin your props you'll see that you're gonna destroy your battery so uh, if I were to do this again um, I would have this lead be a lot longer and actually tuck it underneath the battery strap instead of doing what I did. Um, what I have to actually now end up doing is um, uh, I'm going to be uh, tie strapping this onto my right angle and then coming around the side here to, uh, to plug this in. Actually you have to twist it, come around the side and plug it in which is going to make the antenna be a little bit uh, crooked as well. So um, yeah, make sure, don't, don't do that. It, it's, it doesn't work the best. So um, I think um, um, talking about the USB, I think I mentioned that already, but just in case, um, the way that I have it stacked uh, to plug into the USB, I had to actually uh, shave a little bit of the side panel. Um, so I used a very, very sharp knife and shaved it a little bit um, in order for me to actually be able to plug in the, the USB cord while it's put together like this. So that's something you can probably do before you put it together to save yourself a step. So just shave a little bit off the bottom and that'll give you enough clearance. Um, for the motors and the ESCs, the ESCs I've got on the bottom here, I did actually end up soldering directly to the ESCs here. Um, I cut everything the length and I did not use any pin headers, by the way, on the board. Everything is soldered directly onto the board as well. No possible way I could have thought about fitting any pin headers in here. It's just way too tight. So I think that's it for right now. Overall, um, um, oh, one last thing uh, for GEP, um, the the strap, the hole for the strap, is actually comes from here to here instead of from here to here. So the room for the strap is actually a little bit too small because here's the screw and here's the strap. Um, and it, it barely fits in there. So it would have been nicer if they would have actually just uh, put this little notch for where the, uh, the strap comes in a little bit more that way and you know uh, basically just move the whole thing over just a hair, hair bit. Um, not a huge deal but again just a small little design flaw. So uh, overall uh, I do really love it. I'm, ab I'm absolutely hooked into this. Uh, it it's just a lot of fun. I can't wait for uh, my new camera to come in this weekend. 
and also I have a, a, min, a minim OSD coming in as well so that I can actually see all of the uh, um, uh, you know voltages and everything else right on the screen I saw some of the uh, uh, on-screen displays today I'm sorry not today yesterday when I was out uh, flying with the guys and it's definitely the way to go uh, so if, uh, if you can afford it swing the extra few bucks and get yourself a minimum OSD you can get one of the micros for like I think it's like nine or ten dollars and then um, you can get the programmer for another six dollars so it's like a sixteen dollar investment but I, I think it's definitely going to be worth it so um, love it everybody loved the the frame that saw it on Saturday they they thought it was a great little design um, so I definitely do give this two thumbs up um, and I look forward to uh, getting some flight videos up hopefully by next Sunday so thanks very much for watching if you have any questions about anything I talked about or any questions you saw in the video today please feel to drop a comment down below um, I'll try to respond as quickly as I can thanks so much for watching and have a great day.